welcome to my channel in this video we will learn about introduction to euclid's geometry this is a important chapter for class 9th so let us see what is euclid's geometry the word geometry is derived from the greek words geo means the earth and metrion means to measure so it appears to have originated from the need for measuring land euclid was a mathematics teacher he was born in alexandria in greece he introduced the method of proving mathematical results by using deductive logical reasoning and the previously proved results the geometry of plane figures is known as euclidean geometry Euclid summarized the work of geometry as definitions. He listed 23 definitions in book 1 of elements. A few of them are a point is that which has no part. A line is a breadthless length. The ends of a line are points. A straight line is a line which lies evenly with the points on itself. A surface is that which has length and breadth only. The edges of surface are lines. A plane surface is a surface which lies evenly with the straight lines on itself. In these definitions we observe that point, line, breadth, length, plane, etc are undefined terms. The only thing is that we can represent these terms intuitively or explain them with the help of physical models. Starting with these definitions, Euclid assumed certain properties which were not to be proved. These assumptions are actually obvious universal truths. He divided them into two types: axioms and postulates. He used the term postulate for assumptions that were specific to geometry only, and axioms were the assumptions used throughout mathematics and not specifically linked to geometry. Now let us study about axioms and postulates in details. Axioms are basic facts which are taken for granted without proof. Some of the Euclid's axioms are things which are equal to the same thing are equal to one another. That is if p is equal to q and r is equals to q then p equals to r also. Second axiom is if equals are added to equals the wholes are equal. That is If p is equal to q then p plus r is equal to q plus r third axiom is if equals are subtracted from equals the remainders are equals that is if p is equal to q then p minus r is equals to q minus r fourth axiom is things which coincide with one another are equal to one another fifth axiom is the whole is greater than the part that is if p is greater than q then there exists r such that p is equals to q plus r sixth axiom is things which are double of the same things are equal to one another that is if p is equal to q then double of p is equal to double of q seventh axiom is things which are halves of the same things are equal to one another that is if p is equal to q then half of p is equal to half of q now let us study postulate postulate is a statement whose validity is accepted without proof euclid gave five postulates the first postulate is a straight line may be drawn from any one point to any other point this postulate tells us that at least one straight line passes through two distinct points in this figure p and q are two distinct points out of all lines passing through p there is exactly one line l which also passes through q also out of all lines passing through the point q there is exactly one line l which also passes through the point p hence we find that there is a unique line l which passes through the points p and q now comes the second postulate it states that a terminated line can be produced indefinitely here we have a terminated line and we can produce it indefinitely in both the directions third postulate states that a circle can be drawn with any center and any radius 
This is self-explanatory. We can draw any circle with any radius. Now let us learn the fourth postulate. It states that all right angles are equal to one another. Now comes the fifth postulate, the most important postulate of Euclid's geometry. It states that if a straight line falling on two straight lines makes the interior angles on the same side of it taken together less than two right angles, then the two straight lines, if produced indefinitely, meet on that side on which the sum of angles is less than two right angles. For example, in this figure, line PQ falls on two lines AB and CD such that angle 1 plus angle 2 is less than 180 degree on the left side of PQ. Therefore, the lines AB and CD will intersect on the left side of PQ. So this is all about Euclid's geometry. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching. Thank you.